Hello, hello, welcome back to Paint Minis Live. I'm your host, Bill T, in the Creation Cave today. Uh, earlier on today, I got the lance primed up for our beloved General Panic. Um, hello. So we have that available to paint tonight. I'm hoping to try out uh, some crackle bases uh, tonight as well which are, uh, I've got, I picked up a bottle of Vallejo Crackle Medium to use on that experiment. Uh, I've already painted some of the, uh, howdy Dungeon Minister, good to see you. It looked like you had a good camping trip out there and some, some nice shots that I saw on your community post. Um, I hope you had a good time. Um... Yeah, I'm going right for the juice bottle tonight. It just kind of felt like that that kind of night. <clears throat> juice right from the bottle, baby. Um, let's let's get some let's get some little minis here to show. So this is what I've done with some of them. They have this kind of old 90s green color base going on. Hey, what's going on, Collecting Chaos? Good to see you. How you been? But I have uh, I have painted these bases now this kind of lime green color, uh, which I'm hoping will show through on the actual like crackle medium part, which unsurprisingly I forgot to bring down here. It was fun, but wet fun. Um, how's the basement doing? Yes, thank you for bringing that up. What a wonderful segue. I appreciate it. So the basement. <clears throat> oh. I don't really want to remember it. I kind of wish I could just kind of get it out of my head um, for starters. Uh, the So I tracked down the problem. I don't know what I was feeling in there. I think it was maybe some kind of plug that's like in the actual drain part of the two basin sink that we have in our basement that the washer, like the hose from the washer drains into. Um... I don't know what I was feeling in there. I pulled out a whole bunch of gunk from it. Um, there wasn't any like bones or anything, but I think there was like a lot of calcium deposits, um, <clears throat> which could have just been from hard water or whatnot. But uh, I went to Home Depot after work on, what was it? Like, earlier this week anyways, went to Home Depot. I got a new um, like trap the little J part under the sink. I got a new trap and I disassembled the thing. Um, and I tried to replace that trap. Well, nobody makes it like that anymore. Apparently the way that this is configured because the threads are on this one part and there's no threads on the other that from the new piece. And apparently plumbers moved away from that because it just caused leaks and things. So I was like, okay, all right, cool. So what do I got to do now? Well, I have to take, I wish I had a picture of this I could put on the screen, but basically from, if you think of your, your drain, I'm just going to make a little kind of J with my, my finger here, your drains here, and then you have the trap, and then you have another part that comes out of it to wherever it goes to where it drains. I took apart all of that and got, got rid of it. I was like, okay, I'm done with this. Replace it with PVC. And then, um, I, did a little test, put some water in the sink, and it was still coming back up. So um, that's another thing I'm going to get to collecting chaos. You're smart. I like you. Um, but the entire assembly there was not only part of the problem. Um, you know, it, it it definitely was part of the problem, but there there was more to it. The sink runs into what I'm calling a stand pipe, but it's basically a, lar a larger drain pipe that comes down from also the kitchen. And that was definitely the problem. That thing was so clogged. I have never seen so much detritus in some pipes before. <laughs> there was so much in there. And so I went and got the... Um, like 50 foot drain snake from Sarah's dad again, brought it over, um, disassembled a bunch of stuff, 
got into that pipe and for like two hours I had to snake that thing and the stuff coming out of there was like nightmare fuel. I think, uh, you know, it was a pox walker party right there. That was going to be their hors d'oeuvres or the, whatever was coming out of here. Um, yeah, the main, the, the stack. Yeah. Okay. That sounds kind of familiar now. Uh, yeah, it was that thing. So I had to go playing around in that for a couple hours. Um, I mean, got most of the water up off the floor and all that. Um, the smell is dissipated. That's for sure. I, I, when I went back to Home Depot the second time to get the an extension, a pipe extension for it, I did I did get a bunch of screens and like um, these mesh things that go actually in the in the drain as well, and like a lint sock and stuff for the uh, washer and dryer. Um, I could have called the landlord for it, you know, and saved myself a little time and money, but uh, she's been really good to us. She hasn't raised the rent, even though we had to have a new water heater installed. And I think that's kind of been a thing these days have been landlords raising rent to, you know, a couple extra hundred dollars or more. So I just was trying to avoid that and do something nice for her because she's been nice to us. So, um, yeah, soap and grease and stuff was all just jammed in that thing, man. Oh, it was it was quite the quite the workout. Uh, I'm happy to have it done with, I think, um, you know, so that's good. Now I can get back to painting where I kind of belong. Uh, Cal, how's it going? I haven't seen any packages yet in the mail, Cal. Um, I checked, checked a little earlier. I haven't seen anything yet. So hopefully they're going to be here soon. Collecting chaos. Um, we don't use any... Um, we use just like sal suds from Dr. Bronner's in our laundry. Um, kind of concentrated liquid soap, but we don't use any um, like softener or anything like that. I know that stuff can just build up in washing machines. So we don't, we don't use any of that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, indeed. Yay, the problem is solved. I never want to go through that again. I'm sure I might have to, but I have pulled out of as many stops as I can to prevent that. Um, I snaked the drains in the bathroom. I, I snaked all the, like all the drains. I just got drain snake crazy. I was very into it for a minute just because I didn't want it to happen anywhere else. We have our little lance primed here for general panic that I'm hoping to paint up tonight. <sighs> My next problem is transporting these guys. As long as we haven't started painting, let's we'll, we'll keep the conversation flowing if that's all right with everybody. Unless you really just want to get to the paint, in which case, you know, tell me that's fine. I'll, I'll get to painting. Um, so shipping these things is gonna be interesting. I did some research, and I found out that with a little finagling, I can cut certain types of foam with my laser cutter. So I've been kind of contemplating to myself what kind, which foam I want to use, but I'm thinking that these skeletons are going to get inserts, not just like insulation foam inserts like I did with um, Azerath the dragon for, for Bill Sylvie. Um, Yeah, yeah, I, we, we really don't use that much soap at all because, um, yeah, it, it just helps the soap kind of dilute in the, in the water like you're, like you're talking about chaos. I know a lot of people use a, a ton of uh, detergent when they don't really need that much, um, which, is, uh, which is something that I had to learn about the hard way, too, at a, on a different occasion. Different story. Anyways, I'm going to be cutting foam inserts for these... Uh, these models to go to Canada with. And so I I wasn't able to get to the Home Depot um, today, but I'm finding that um, I'm definitely going to need a decent amount of it, and I need it to be affordable. So I'm thinking I'm going to be doing maybe like EVA foam inserts, so they're going to be almost like um, tool inserts in a tool drawer or something. 
and then we'll make up a nice little box. It's not really painting minis, and I'm not sure if I'm going to make that a live thing or not, but would you guys be interested in a documentation of how I'm going to be making this custom crate, I guess, to be for sending these? Is, is that something that would in, interest you guys, or is that a little bit too far off of uh, the topic? Oh yeah, no, I I'm gonna be I'm gonna be cutting foam inserts for these. There's no no doubt about it. They're not gonna survive their way to Canada with that. Yeah, the problem with going and digging in the garbage to try and find foam to laser cut is that not all foam formulations are made equally. And if you go and grab the wrong kind of foam and toss it in a laser cutter, even if it's labeled as a specific kind of foam, the chemical makeup of, of that might be different. So if you're cutting one kind of foam, you can think, all right, yeah, I'm going to put this in there. I'm going to put it at this speed and this amount of intensity. And you hit the go button, and now you have kind of just a giant smoldering fire that doesn't self-extinguish in, inside of your laser cutter. Or it off-gasses in small quantities like chlorine or something, and then you've got chlorine gas that you have to get out of the room for, or it, it, or it just it will start destroying the actual mirrors of the laser. So you kind of got to, um, you know, kind of got to look into what you're buying. But I think it would be a good investment just because if we take a look even at just some of our standard dudes, um, there is not much connection on the base itself. There's some, um, but I mean, we're talking about the like the footprint of. Do I have a tape measure? Do not have a tape measure. I do have a tape measure. All right, let's 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 get some actual numbers here. So I'm just trying to measure his little foot. To see how long that is that's probably about um it's about a quarter quarter of an inch so a quarter of an inch worth of tiny foot that's actually connected to the base if i'm going to send these things as is and i'm pretty sure even in in the post itself like um there's going to be casualties, but if I can minimize it, it's going to be better because uh, if you've got to super glue these things back onto the base, it's just another thing that's going to, you know, not be so great if you've got to put it back together uh, and try and match up the paint where it was and so on and so forth. Um, so, yeah, extruded polystyrene or soft foam. Um, I think I'm going to go with EVA. Uh, I know it's a closed cell foam, so it's a bit more rigid, but it's also the one that I've seen most people cut just because a lot of people like to go ham dinner. Um, it does, doesn't it, Cal? Thanks for noticing. I appreciate you. But um, it does, uh, a lot of people cut EVA foam for tool inserts for toolboxes, so I can readily find the information I need uh, just about that. And I think that that would be a better idea to use rather than um, like a softer foam, like a um, like a PE foam, um, because PE foam is, I mean, it's sold in various thicknesses, but my worry about PE foam is that I'm never I'm not going to get clean cuts. It's going to take me too long to kind of dial in the laser for a clean cut on PE, uh, because the even though it's closed cell, the the cells of the foam are much more um, ex, they're expanded more. They're bigger bubbles. Um, so uh, I don't know. I've kind of just been racking my brain about it. But when it when it comes that time, if that would be of interest to you guys, I'll I'll put that up as kind of a, a paint minis sidetrack kind of thing. I just don't want to get too far out of the way of 
you know, I want to be a mini painting channel and not, uh, you know, I don't want to go and do like uh, metal detector videos or something and toss them on here. Oh yeah, that's a great idea, Chaos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, that is that is a that is a really good idea. I might have to actually, I might, I might have to consider that. Um, if I did, if I wrapped them in like bubble wrap or some some other kind of maybe there's some other kind of small thing that I can put them in to get them to Dungeon Minister. But if I did the foam thing, um, at least that way, when he gets them, he could have a cool carrying case for them that was, you know, uh, Horde of the Damned centric, I think would be pretty cool. Toilet paper sarcophagi. They, they're mummies. They're, they're, they're mummies in their other life. Um, so that's kind of the thing. That's kind of the shipping deal that I've been thinking about over the course of uh, the past couple of days. Uh, after the whole plumbing incident, I kind of wanted some time to myself, so we haven't really been streaming a ton this uh, this week. But we'll we'll be back at it next week uh, with more fun videos. Um, I was not able to get any UV paint. It's still on its way. It's going to take a lot longer. Apparently, it's gotten held up in export. Like, it's not even in-country yet from Green Stuff World. I made a special order for this UV paint from Green Stuff World to a local game shop. But it's held up in export. I just don't think I can wait to, to do that. So we're going to just paint their eyes kind of glowy green. Uh, we already have done all of them, minus General Panic. But we're gonna have it's just gonna be paint, unfortunately. Um, oh, don't worry about it. I'm, I'm, I, I can, I can take care of shipping. <laughs> Pardon me. One moment. <coughs> All right. Um, <clears throat> yeah, <laughs> sending a fortune and TP to somebody. Uh, that's kind of funny. We, we ship toilet paper at work, like large cases of 96 rolls. Um, and it, it's great fun. Uh, the shipping cost on that is actually not as bad as you'd think it'd be. All right. <clears throat> With that being said, I have to actually go and get the crackle medium because it's upstairs. I totally forgot to bring it down. So I'm going to go do that, if you guys don't mind entertaining yourselves for just a split moment here. And I will be right back. <clears throat> We are coming back. I brought some examples too, some different kind of uh, different kind of foams. Catch up with the chat here a little bit. 
Yeah, chaos. You should see. Uh, you should see the dungeon ministers um, TP roll trees. That was a pretty cool terrain build. Watch. <laughs> Wait. Why does this? Why does this color say Mephist in red on it? What did you guys do? Um. Wow. Okay, he's collecting toilet paper rolls for confetti. That's cool. That's cool. I dig it. I dig it. Um, so, a couple things. This is your standard blue foam uh, insulation here. Uh, this is a, uh, XPS, expanded polystyrene. So you can kind of see right there. It's very thick, dense very packed foam it's very rigid if you if you push it down it's it doesn't really move much it's great for for shipping things like large metal models that i found uh because they don't they won't move around much with kinetic force uh this is pe foam or uh expanded uh what is it um poly Polyethylene, yeah, polyethylene foam. This this stuff right here, you can see how much more, like how much more give this has, and the like the structure to it. Um, <clears throat> the problem with this, and I have some of this around because you buy stuff that comes with this. The problem I have with this though is that it's really thick. Uh, this sheet right here and basically all of the sheets that I have it's about a two inch thick uh, material the laser I have I could use this with but the laser that I have um, the actual um, lens on it has a focal distance of like two and a half inches I need like probably about five, maybe a five inch focal distance if if I were to do it. Um, mainly because what would happen with this is the laser itself is like kind of a, it's like the peace sign in your hand. Um, the beam comes down and it gets culminated down to a point. Um, and the problem that I have in what I'm trying to kind of work through if I was going to use this is that when you get down, it, it's going to come, the beam itself is going to come down into the middle of the material and it's going to be dead on right in the middle. And it's going to have a V coming into it and then a V going out of it. So however I cut this, it's going to be either a little shy or a little, um, a little bit too much on one side or the other. So it's going to make all these cuts look a little wonky. So I'm just trying to figure out the best best way to, to go about that. Um, at least with like um, EVA foam, th they sell it in like half inch thicknesses, which would be a lot easier to work with because I wouldn't have to do any math on where I actually have to position the laser head to make the clean cuts. I wouldn't really have to worry about that. It, it would be more of a um, situation where I could just kind of cut it, not have to worry so much. Okay, awesome. Yeah, <laughs> I, I kind of forgot about that. There's probably probably some additional packing materials coming with your guys. Um, oh yeah, definitely. Um, Definitely good, good stuff to make with those little plastic cookies. I hear you. I didn't even think about that PVC pipe with spackle. Ooh. I love this hobby. Meet so many, so many cool people. Go to so many cool places. 
this little nondescript brown bag came from a place called Scale Modeler's Supply. Good old Minnesota here. Um, which was a really unique, interesting shop that I went to. It's not really a wargaming-centric place. Um, yeah, that, that is a good point, Dungeon Minister. Uh, I, I don't think I'll ne necessarily be poaching that, but should I need to, I will, I will make sure whatever I place back is, is of equal or better quality. Um, <clears throat> anyways, went to Scale Modeler Supply, and this was the weirdest place. Its entrance is on street level, but then you go down to the basement. It's a massive place, and... They had so many model kits there. I wandered that store for about a half hour. It took me to like go up and down every aisle and check out what they had. They had everything from trains, car, trains of almost all scale, even into the bigger ones, um, like kind of almost like ridey ones. Not quite, but I mean, it was close. Um, the They had cars, planes, uh, military vehicles, sci-fi, you name it. It's it's all there. They even had model kits from like some of the really old school Enterprise kits, those really old Star uh, Star Trek Enterprise kits. They had them down there. I mean, they were priced, it was like 150 bucks if you wanted one, but uh, just all, all kinds of really cool scale model stuff. Um, their, their scenery selection scenics kind of thing was immaculate they had anything you could think of i had so many ideas down there and a lot of it is like kind of like this old stock and stuff from other places um so i mean you could probably do a city fight board from this place on the cheap for like 150 bucks and you could have yourself a really cool city fight board um just from taking old kits off their hands, and it it was a very nice place. I had a had a lovely lovely time there. Um, let's take a look and speed up here with the chat. Yeah, ATM. Kits were definitely there. <laughs> um, I did pick up some some fun stuff while I was there. Let's let's go through a quick haul here. I got some some uh, Vallejo retarder medium um, from from there. I got uh, some gloss varnish from down there. All this stuff is Vallejo. Um, I got our special crackle medium that we're going to be using tonight because I just couldn't face myself to use the other stuff. Uh, and then I got matte varnish to use as well. Um, so we're going to be cracking out some of those bad boys tonight. Um, the creation cave is a bit of a wreck right now. I have one of the, uh, one of the spray booths that I have down here for a guest painter. Uh, is actually in complete pieces uh, just because I have been attempting to replace the extremely noisy stock fan from from it because anytime I turn this sucker on, it is uh, it is loud. <laughs> it's really loud on the mic. So I'm trying to replace it with a stock 120 mil PC fan. Um, but it looks like I'm going to need to figure out how to actually build a fan speed controller to put in there another another large project for for the channel um to document at a later date we're gonna get some paint flowing um just to try out this technique i don't know how many models we're gonna get through but we're gonna give it a shot I'll be right back. I'm going to go actually get the power supply out of that to start up the spray booth. All right. Do, 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 do.
All right, now we now we should be good. We'll get the uh, camera repositioned here. I'm excited. Uh, crackle medium is something that I haven't really experimented with too much, um, but I know what I'm looking for when, like, the end product that I'd like. Let me get this guy out of the way for now. We'll use this guy as our uh, sacrificial piece, I suppose. Well, do I have any others that are... We'll use maybe just a grunt. This guy's got a trumpet. He's special. <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, I was going to say maybe some kind of monster vomited on them. But I like a dragon better. So let's take a look. There's matte varnish. Here's our crackle medium. So we're going to take the crackle medium. We're going to paint it on there. I'm going to find a quick sacrificial brush. Get some of this. One thing that I am interested about is the dry time on this. Because, let's think about this. I'm gonna apply the crackle medium, and then I'm probably gonna need to spray the color I want over the top of it. What color would I want over the top of this bad boy? Um, you do a lot of woodland stuff, don't you, uh, Dungeon Minister? Is that is that true? Most of your most of your game boards and stuff are kind of woodland color. All right, so we got two different colors. I've got a, a dark brown and then kind of a darker green. I'm kind of thinking either one of those could work. I'm leaning a little bit more towards the brown though. If you're gonna be putting it in dungeons, it'll kind of blend in a bit better than just a green, I think. So we will get the Compressor going. Let that charge up. Let's get some get some flow aid in here. Let's see here. That's thinner. We don't need thinner. We need flow aid. Took a trip through a volcanic landscape a while back. Okay. Okay. I'm, th I'm hoping to give an illusion that this particular color is coming up through the ground. There we go. But I'm hoping that it gives the illusion that this is coming out through the ground, which is why I'd like to use it. Toss you on the paint shaker. So big shout out to uh, to our friend Mini Warmut for putting us in the uh, for 
for putting us in the uh, mini war month September challenge video. If you haven't seen it, it's pretty cool. A lot of minis were painted by a lot of different painters, and it's really cool to see their different styles. Uh, but big thank you to uh, Mini War Mutt for organizing that. I had a lot of fun. I think tonight is going to be more or less a test of this. Um, I'll come back tomorrow and see the results because I think this Crackle Medium is going to expand even further uh, over the course of 24 hours. But I think this is kind of just experiment night. And we'll get, uh, we'll see if we can get um, General Panic's uh, lance done tonight as well. All right. Find my sponge here. And do a little backflow action. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed it. I, I met a lot of really cool painters through that challenge. It was it was just a heck of a lot of fun. Um, I met uh, Frost and Fist there. Uh, met uh, Weird World War II was on there. Some other scale model guys that do do something a bit different than. I don't want to paint on my hand. Not quite at that stage yet. Cool. We've got our brown mixed up and ready to go. Let's get a little bit of this stuff on the palette and see what happens here. I think it's almost time for a clean out on this bad boy. Oh, yeah. When that are you were talking about that six hour stream they did? Yeah, that was. <laughs> I came in and crashed that hard. Like that was totally my fault. I don't, I had some, I, that was fun. I, I had myself quite the, uh, quite the experience with that. That's for sure. So I've got a couple of drops of this stuff in the palette here. Um, we're just going to kind of take this old brush here and saturate it. So we're we're both kind of learning this together, by the way. <laughs> Dress Thompson trip trip sequence. Yeet. I'm gonna do this pretty liberally. I'm 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 trying to make it thin enough, but not too thin. Uh, just because I'm hoping that uh, I'd like this to dry, so we can see as much of the effect as possible prior to uh, prior to the stream ending. But as far as I'm aware, you place down a layer of this bad boy all over the base. A lot of people were talking about using a hair dryer. I don't have a hair dryer. Sarah doesn't do hair dryers. I don't have one either because my hair is constantly like a quarter of an inch or less. Uh, so it is shiny. A little bit shiny going on there. Next step is uh, apparently to grab the airbrush and to paint our color over the top of it, and it will protect the other color underneath. I'm going to grab a glove. Glove sounds good. Um... Yeah, I, I've i kind of been thinking about just picking one up myself, like a really cheap one, or maybe finding one at a yard sale would be great if I could, ideally. Uh, just because since I do it, I do all the painting live here. Um, it kind of stinks when I'm waiting on dry time. So without further ado, here we go. We're going to try and
Okay. So we'll call that attempt number one. We'll put him in the back. I'll go find another grunt, and we'll try this again, but with a lot more. Because I'm not sure if I need a lot of this or a little of this. So we're gonna we're gonna goop this guy up pretty hardcore. We're gonna get it very liberally put on there. But it's, that is actually a lot. It feels like I'm painting snot onto the model. It's really weird consistency. It's kind of fun. Um, but it's like very gloopy. Okay, so that is sufficiently glooped. That guy is, is very gloopy. And we'll just repeat the procedure one more time. I think I gotta maybe turn down the air pressure here a bit. Come on back here. Let's give that a shot now. It's probably good. Oh, wow. That's already starting to kind of go to work. I can, I can see that. That is, that was pretty quick. Um, all right, so I guess the gloopy thing is working out pretty well. Um, I can already see small cracks forming in the, uh, on various places, but that is, that is pretty wild. I can't wait to see how that looks really coming out of there. So now, um, what I've seen is that you wait just a little bit, and then you reactivate it with a coat of varnish. Okay, hey, see you later, Cal. Good to see you, as always. Looking forward to seeing what uh, what's all in that package. That is pretty interesting. A comic book press. I wonder if it's similar to a hat press. Well, I, I doubt you'd want steam in the mix, but. How's our other guy doing here? I just don't think there was enough stuff on there. What? Well, that's pretty dry now. Interesting. So you need a, you need a serious amount of this stuff. <laughs> Or crackle stuff. Okay. Oh, hello. Let's line ourselves up another grunt here. That's really cool. What kind of comic books do you like to uh, collect? Their chaos. This last guy is sufficiently coated. Definitely really coated in it. I 
There you go. My, uh, my, <laughs> a crackle addict. Yeah, I, I slowly but surely we're getting to the point where I wonder if there's going to be a crackle overdose. Um, but anywho, uh, my grandfather was super into Disney comic book collecting, uh, and he has he has some pretty old Disney comic books in a collection of his. Hmm? I'm really going to have to turn down the PSI on this. It's going to be basically nothing. I don't think that's really going to work out as well as I had hoped. Oh, it's just way too much of it on there. I think that, that ought to do it. So we got three different buddies that are all here. 1970 or 1947. Yeah. That was probably around his time. He he got them when he was in Okinawa as an air traffic control operator during World War II. I, I think where he started collecting them. Like, well, after a little bit after the war too. Um I'd have to give the family a call and ask a bit more about that. Okay. So I'm kind of running out of grunts to test these things on. Um, but my next thought was... Um, I am going to give out the Citadel, give the Citadel color a try and just see, see if this tarry consistency crackle medium stuff is actually going to do anything. So we'll see what, what happens with that. So apparently people put this on with like a spatula, but I am just going to use a brush, I think, from the 60s. Well, that's pretty interesting. Still, I have a thing for not liking the GW paint pots, these things. So we're going to kind of gloop this stuff on one of them and see what happens. It's like really thick. It's like tar or something. Maybe I put too much on, but I haven't worked with Citadel products in so long. I'm 
just using kind of a stippling effect. Two different products, three different ways of doing it. Hopefully we get a winner out of any one of them would be great. Twenty thousand comic books. Wow. That is uh that is a lot of comics. Holy man. That is pretty cool though. I have to admit. Collectors save history. And history those is. I might actually give this a try too. I don't really want to get this on my fingers, but let's see if I can paint the brown over it. I'm just taking, I, I guess I'm going to try and speed this up by using the airbrush with just the air. I think a lot of this may be soaked into the wood. I did prime these prior to putting them on there, but the last step is apparently to put some varnish over the top of that to reactivate it. So that's what we're on to next. Yeah, I just am really not a fan of the Citadel line of stuff. Um, they thin all right for regular brushes, but like running them through an airbrush is a little tricky. Not only that, but I'm, I, I found that like I just like the quality of Monument Hobbies and their stuff a lot better. It's they've got so much value going for them per milliliter of paint that it's. I'm kind of a, just a convert at this point anyways. <clears throat> so say uh, Dungeon Minister, I was wondering, Giant's Tomb Island, is that, that's a legit island. Is it? Or, or is it just like, did you change the name of the island? And, but it, it's, it's an actual island. I I will go with a wet palette if I'm doing like a really long painting session. Otherwise, um, breaking one out is not always advantageous. For this, I'm I'm just kind of doing some experimentation tonight, so I don't think I'll be running a wet palette. But if I was going to sit down here for like four hours, I would definitely crack open the. Uh, wet palette to to use that okay that's pretty cool i that that's pretty cool that it's a real place with a real the the same name that is cool um yeah let's run some varnish through this let's see here i'm gonna go with the matte varnish i'm gonna put it on the shaker real quick says it's fast drying so i think i'm going to put some flow improver in the paint cup here 
make sure all that brown is kind of run its course off the needle. Sometimes there's some little remnants going on. Probably because I was running uh, primer through this airbrush earlier and the uh, brown is kind of just sticking a bit to, to that. All right. I think that should be thoroughly cleaned out and uh, at least enough for our porpoises tonight. Uh, flow, flow improver into the bottom of the cup. Just a couple drops, three or four, something like that. Very nice, very nice. Just read your message there, message there, Dungeon Minister. Hey, egg cartons work out just fine. Use what you can get. <laughs> That's my my motto. I just keep one around for posterity, I suppose. I don't know. I I like the little palette I've got, but egg cartons work just fine too. Put a nice little globet of matte varnish in there. It's kind of nice. I can seal in the paint anyways while I'm at it. Gonna make sure it's really thoroughly mixed in the pan cup there. Oh, that is that is a really good idea. That is a really good idea, Chaos. Those little uh, like fidget toys and stuff. Yeah, that's now that is a good idea i might have to go and take a little look around ebay or something and find me one of those little toys because i don't use a ton of paint on a brush anyways and that would be perfect and then you can just kind of pop it out okay cool so let's see what happens here I'm going to spray this varnish on here pretty liberally. Which reminds me, I should probably turn on my spray booth now.
Well, I ran through a lot of that really quick, but I guess you can kind of see some of the crackles on the base. Might be hard to see with the lighting, but I mean, some are forming. Not as many as I'd hoped yet, but we'll see what happens with the dry time. <laughs> Where did I put the varnish? Well, I'll have to find out how that works. Yeah. Oh, the dollar store is a great place for hobby stuff. It is a wonderful place for hobby stuff. Well, we will leave these guys for some dry time. A little R&R, &R, I think. Um, and we'll come back. We'll come back and find out how they did with, uh, with about 24 hours worth of dry time on them. I'm hoping that's going to be enough. I think... I think you need quite a bit of this product to make the effect work. I have not seen anything really happen with the G-Dub stuff either, but... We'll find out. We'll find out. I'm gonna leave, uh, I'm gonna leave that here for tonight there, friends. I appreciate you guys turn, uh, tuning in and checking out, uh, checking out the Crackle Base experimentation tonight. Um, I'm going to put up the next stream as soon as I know when it's going to be available, uh, and we'll actually get to painting the lance, but for some reason I kind of have a headache going on. I think it's probably because I've been maybe cleaning out the fireplace and I've got a lot of like ash built up in my nose. Um, I don't know, but I've kind of got a little headache going on, so I'm going to go take care of that. Maybe a hot shower and uh, and uh, some Advil or something. Um, but I'm going to leave that experimentation there for tonight. Uh, thank you again for tuning in. We'll see you guys again very soon. And everybody, be safe. Take care. We'll see you next time here on Pain Minis Live.